Looking for something, Greg? Oh. Yo, some things didn't go quite according to plan. Had an idea what I wanted to do today and it didn't quite pan out. I'm out of my element. This isn't a garage. But with not being in the garage, I've had some things presented to me and this is going to be a topic of discussion, if anything. Haven't talked about the steroid scene in a while, the performance enhancing drugs. What we have found out, or at least what I've derived from having all of these separate conversations with different people, is that there's a platform, a person, Derek, more plates, more dates, and he'll go out of his way to educate as many people as possible on the performance enhancing drug scene as he can. I've learned quite a bit from him, maybe you have as well, and he's been doing these pieces with different people, whether they be athletes or influencer people on whatever platform they are, monthly, bi-monthly, randomized drug testing, and he's going to get every single metric looked at that you can and then determine whether or not you are on steroids, performance enhancing drugs, anything. And no matter what happens, people have ways to justify how that person can get around that test. And this is from the dude who puts more work into it than anybody. And then you've got people in our world, the CrossFit world, talking about WADA, USADA. You can't possibly let CrossFit, the entity that be, use drug-free sport, where they can then determine whether or not they want to give you the information with what they received from that organization. They need a third-party test. They can't control the results. And everyone's got a way of saying that people use steroids, SARMs, peptides, growth hormone, whatever, and they're getting away with it. And I think so too, but I don't want to be one of those people who just constantly says there's no way to prove it and i like to give examples of how i think that people can clear their names and also if you follow along on top of this always being discussed periodically on the channel i mean maybe it's not as frequent as it used to be but the most recent thing that i put up was involving a team blue city crossfit and their appeals process involving a sarm and a contaminated supplement i believe it was osterine they end up spending up quite a bit of money there's a podcast that they had done it's 40 some minutes long i covered it. I interjected like I did with the Adrian Bosman thing from the other day. But the key point is that they went leaps, bounds, miles to try to prove to the CrossFit team, which comprised of what, four people, one of them being Bosman, the other one being Eubanks, I believe. They didn't even know their own drug policy from what it seemed like. And why am I telling you all this? What is the solution? What can be done? I bumped into an individual who suggested something that I wouldn't have ever thought about. This person was in law enforcement and this person had their name cleared using a lie detector test. I noticed you were looking at that when I came in. Something had gone down. Their job was on the line. They had been in their role for quite a bit of time. And with the lie detector test, everything was just gone put away. This individual's suggestion was why don't the CrossFit games or anyone really just go the route of using a lie detector test to clear your name? Because I've seen these before, but I never saw one actually up close. And I thought, wow, that makes a whole lot of sense. I asked how much did it cost? It's somewhere from three to $600, depending on where you go to do it. And then you think about the fact that the team such as Blue City CrossFit keeps on getting all of this different stuff done. And at the end of it, they're still screwed. The pattern that would happen would be CrossFit has a series of people that you can go to. All right, you tested positive. Here's your appeal. Go get this lie detector test done, you and all of your teammates. You know what? Why don't you try that on? Oh! Here's some in your area. You have to use these ones, and that's important because from what I understood from the conversation, they're only as good as the person who's conducting the test. So if I ran a lie detector test, I don't know what the hell the little bumpy lines mean. I don't know where to put the sensors. They're on your fingers, they're on your heart, they're detecting your sweating, they're detecting your heart rate. They can determine whether or not you're nervous, you're scared, you're happy, you're mad. And there's a whole lot of it that I have no idea. And I understand that they're not 100% accurate ever. Now, these aren't 100% accurate, right? They're... Well, you'd be surprised how accurate they are. But from what I brought up in the beginning of this video is that no one is ever going to be happy with anything. And if this was currently in place, I understand that there's going to be people who go, the appeals process is a lie detector test. You tested positive and they found 10,000th of a nanogram of osterine in your urine. And then they're going to clear their name using a lie detector test. Well, the difference here is that that one cost $10,000. This one cost three to $600. And if it works for law enforcement in things that are way more impactful in the world than whether or not an athlete in a space is using a drug to get better at that space, I think it makes sense. Tell me, who do you think is more likely to be 
be trained to pass a lie detector test. A crossfitter, you know, the people who just kind of throw weights around, what run miles, run up the hill with that bag, beat your head into the wall, whoever's the best at beating their head into the wall is going to come out the other end the fittest. Or would you say it's somebody in law enforcement? I would bet for every one person in the crossfit space who has the tools to sway a lie detector test, there's 10,000 people in law enforcement and it's good enough for them. And then there's always that piece where you think about the athlete Jalen Franklin. Remember, he's the guy who got the bag of pills. Clearly this person was trying to skew the truth and prove that they hadn't done it on purpose or whatever, but through the lie detector test, you would have easily found out what we all kind of figured out on our own. They would have had to have paid that money for that appeals process. And you think maybe they just don't do it all together. Oh, they caught it. It was in the urine. And I know that when I go to take that lie detector test, that I'm going to lose. I, just, I, I, I shouldn't. Well, why should you be afraid? You have nothing to hide. <laughs> At the end of this, you realize that no matter what you do, no one is going to be happy. Fans think that everyone in Major League Baseball is still using stuff. People think LeBron James in basketball is using stuff. The people in the NFL, they get a two or three game suspension if they're caught using something. So why wouldn't they if it's going to elongate their careers, make them a bunch of money? And all of those arguments are also used in CrossFit. Those ones have been around forever. Those ones have more money than God. And we know that CrossFit doesn't have more money than God. And I suppose really nobody does, but you know what I'm trying to say. If no one's ever going to be happy with it, make it something where it just makes sense. Have you ever watched pornographic videos? Easy. Always easier is always better. That way less people understand. I mean, hell, if anything, it turns into a reality show and then it's did you fly on an airplane today? Something that people can get on board with and it would be wild. One of my most popular videos ever was the Tia Toomey Natty or not. And you may have heard on that video that I don't think that she was natural. Now imagine she tests positive at the CrossFit Games and the media around the process at which the lie detector test were to happen. That would be nuts. It was a little rare for my taste. And she clears her name, or she doesn't. But either way, the CrossFit world is a freaking circus right now. I suppose this would be a way in which they could lean into it, hook yourself up to the lie detector test, and hey, did you take this? Of course, it's after a series of questions. Did we eat pot roast for dinner tonight? From what I understand, there's a giant number of baseline questions that then set you up to give a better interpretation of what happens when you take it, but this is just something that made way too much sense for me. And although what I wanted to do today didn't quite pan out, but I, I'm but just I kidding. I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> This is also a video that would not have been made if I had just sat in the garage and not ended up where I am right now in this body of water, which believe it or not, isn't even hot. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Would you be cool if they lie detector test or is it stupid? But remember, everything is stupid anyway. And Riller, out.